Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is waiting to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd. Well, the river bank makes a mighty good road. Dead trees will show you the way. Left foot, wet foot, traveling dark. Follow the drinking gourd. The revival of interest in Civil War history inspired the staff of the Herbert Hoover Library to create a major exhibit on the war to open during the spring of 1994. Curator Maureen Harding designed the exhibit and worked with Registrar Jenny Peterson to borrow some 700 original objects. Building Superintendent Richard Mervick aided technician Chris Mao in constructing exhibit elements while Jenny and Maureen unpacked the borrowed objects and carried to the museum from lenders across the Midwest by archivists Dale Meyer and Scott Nolan. During the production of a major exhibit such as the Civil War, the library and museum staff work hard and also enjoy the work they're doing. One of the most atmospheric design elements were the dead-looking trees used throughout the exhibit, here created by Chris. River hens between two hills Follow the drinking gourd. There's another river on the other side. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. The old man is waiting to carry you to freedom. Follow the here, archivists Pat Wildenberg and Dale Meyer depart for the Rock Island Arsenal right. to pick up an original Civil War cannon. <laughs> Many staff members enjoyed an unusually mild winter day as they labored to get the cannon inside the building. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah, we get a party rock and then hurrah, hurrah, the men will cheer the boys. Stop. 
Here, Jenny and Chris surround an original battlefield surgeon's tent with artificial grass and a split rail fence to add to the realism of a diorama designed by Maureen Harding. Here, several staff members aid Jenny and Chris in installing part of a Civil War timeline. West Branch resident and avid Civil War enthusiast Brad McGowan loaned several objects to the library. The first rifle the government had was a model 1855. The present was a pretty good shot. And uh, he, he ordered his war department to start buying a very popular weapon with the people. It was a lever action. So we brought the lever up and pulled the next. The thing is a real piece of art. One of the most important jobs connected with an exhibit is the expert handling of borrowed objects by the museum's professional staff. Here, Chris and Jenny store some of the 700 borrowed items in the museum's climate-controlled stack area prior to placing them in the finished exhibit. Seventy thousand visitors entered the Civil War through the rotunda of the Herbert Hoover Museum. Confronted immediately by the barrel of a Civil War cannon, visitors could experience what a soldier may have been confronted with on the battlefield. The cannon also divided the gallery into northern and southern sides, making it a symbol of the conflict to come. The north wall included a full-size photograph of President Lincoln, 
nine-foot smokestacks representing the manufacturing might of the North, and weapons used by abolitionist John Brown. Facing these objects, the south wall included a large photograph of Confederate President Jefferson Davis, a cane used by him, white pillars symbolizing southern plantations, and original shackles worn by a young black slave. As visitors entered the main gallery, they saw the last surviving surgical tent used during the war and learned of the horrors of battlefield medicine. A timeline unfolded along five walls, each describing one of the five years of the Civil War. Here, the battles, military leaders, and events were described and illustrated with photos and original objects. Several dioramas were created to give visitors a look at what life was like during the Civil War. One diorama showed soldiers in camp, while another showed the melancholy scene of prisoners of war. Several cases of original weapons used during the war were joined by rare memorabilia, such as a drum used by a Union soldier, the gauntlets worn by Confederate General Robert E. Lee, the saddle used by Union General and future President Ulysses S. Grant, and plaster casts of President Lincoln's hands. An additional gallery summarized the considerable participation of Iowa during the war. Strengthening our conviction that the American public is eager to learn about its nation's history, the Civil War exhibit earned the Hoover Library and Museum renewed respect. And in the future, we will continue to produce exhibits documenting the American experience.